this was a massive undertaking and a, a huge team effort, but I think it's got to be said that it's, you know, it's seeded in Sam's idea and it's him who, who masterminded it all. You have a brother in the 2nd Battalion. Yes, sir. They're walking into a trap. Your orders are to deliver a message calling off tomorrow morning's attack. Why was it important to tell this story in real time? You know, I, I wanted people to feel the real distance between things. You know, I think the First World War, generally speaking, um, you know, in movies and, and stories, feels like a, 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 a war of paralysis, you know, like you're static, you're just in trenches and no man's land. And I found this, this moment in the war where it was possible to take a long journey. Um, and I felt like I wanted an audience to be locked together with the men, you know, experiencing time as they were experiencing it and, and feeling like they were traveling every step with them. I think it was just the best way to tell the, tell, tell the story. I mean, that one continuous take thing, it's, it's not really a gimmick. I don't think Sam sat there and thought, I'm gonna make a, a film in one take just for the sake of making it as a one mm. take. I think it, it just adds a whole other layer of storytelling. And you know, when you watch this film, you're not just watching a film, you're experiencing the film. It's an immersive experience for the audience and you genuinely feel like you're there with these characters. If we're not clever about this, no one will get to your brother. I will. This film did not look easy to shoot. Mm -hmm. um, how did you manage to do those long shots through trenches and barbed wire? Uh, yeah, they were. It was difficult. <laughs> um, it wasn't easy. Uh, it took a lot of time and planning, and discussions, and getting everyone together as a team very early on, and walking, you know, everything out before we did anything, you know, just judging distances. You have to walk on an empty field and then we marked out the trenches with flags and then we dug the trenches, over a mile of trenches, and then you do the same with every scene and every situation in the movie, from no man's land to, you know, woods and quarries and orchards and farmhouses and towns at night. And all of those things had to be measured in terms of their distance from each other and within each other. And um, and we so we are constructing one very very long set really that then has to feel like all these things have been there for for a long time hundreds of years. If you don't get there in time, we will lose sixteen hundred men. Your brother among them. Good luck. I would imagine it was quite physically demanding for the two of you shooting this film. Can you talk a bit about going through mud and water, dust and fire throughout shooting? Dust and fire, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's that. fire in there as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you said it all. Uh, it was, it was tough. It was, it was also emotionally draining as well, physically as well. Um, I mean, it was just. We talked about it a lot, even though we rehearsed for six months and we'd done the film pretty much a hundred times in them six months, just rehearsing. The time we actually got to shooting, it still felt like it was the first time doing it. That's how realistic these situations was. You know, as you say, the fire bit, you know, there's dust, there's mud, and it was hard work. But, you know, it's what them men went through, and what we went through was probably a million times easier than what the real men experienced. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it, the kind of phys the physicality of it all just played in into the played into the, the scenes, you know, it's, we were in the real situation always in, in the water, in the mud, with the fire, and it just, so you didn't have to worry about kind of trying to act it too much, you just, you just had to play the scenes and kind of focus on what the characters wanted to do and just try and get through whatever sort of environment they were in. I, I want the audience not to feel aware of the camera. Um, you may go in aware that the, the, the movie is one shot, but I think if you get lost in the film, you shouldn't be thinking about what the camera's doing, really. You should just be um, uh, you know, watching the story and the characters. For me, it actually br takes you away from the characters less than a conventional storytelling technique. You know, we live our lives in one shot, you know, you, you, you're, you're just, that's what you do. You don't edit in life, you know, but we have, we're so used to movies, we feel that that's the way that stories need to be told. But actually, if these tools were available, or had been available 100 years ago, 
I think a lot more movies would have been made in this way. But you know, it's it's taken a while for digital cameras to emerge that can do this and visual effects that can achieve this and cameras that are small enough to be able to shoot in this way. So, um, so I think it's quite a natural way to tell a story. We need to keep moving. Come on. Can't possibly make it that way, man! You bloody insane! What do you think is so special about Sam Mendes as a director? I think Sam's like Sam's a, a, a really wonderful, sensitive man in him, in himself. But I think his understanding of like the architecture and the kind of mathematics of of how you give how and when you give information to an audience, and an understanding of how because of that because of how and when it's given, how they will then receive it, is unlike anyone I've ever met or worked with. Like his, his kind of mathematical understanding of storytelling is incredible and how we can then create and engineer so much emotion and sort of poetry through that very kind of uh, analytical understanding. Um, how can he, he can kind of orchestrate a feeling is, is amazing. And it was a real privilege to work with him. And, and this was a very, this was a massive undertaking and a, a huge team effort, but I think it's got to be said that it's, you know, it's seeded in Sam's idea and it's him who, who masterminded it all. There is only one way this ends. Last man standing. What's the hardest? Making a Bond movie with all those expectations and then this quite wild project? Um, Bond is pretty hard. It's not about the expectations, actually. I mean, you know, there's expectations attached to any movie, more probably with Bond. But Bond, because it's so split up, it's every, you've done so many different places, different countries, different continents, different units, multiple cameras. Uh, all that sort of stuff. I find I found that is, it was like a sort of um, overwhelming amount of uh, of just the scale of it. So after that, even though this was really difficult and challenging, there was a real relief to just going back to one camera, one journey, you know. And and uh, maybe in some ways this is a reaction to it. <laughs>